In this video, uh, let's talk about statistical analysis, uh, why we would want to analyze a data set, and how um, can we find the mean or average value of a data set. Um, the mean is referred uh, to as in several names, so we, they could be talking about population mean, arithmetic mean, which is probably a, a, a better term, uh, or simply the average, um, which is also called the central tendency of a variable. Uh, in probability theory, uh, mean is often referred to as the expected value of a random variable. And we, you will look at random variables, uh, probability distribution functions, uh, in uh, your probability course, uh, e ECSE 2500. Uh, how do we no denote the mean? Well, if I have uh, a data set in X, some values in X, and I wanted to denote the mean of X, I would simply put a bar over it. Uh, the Greek letter mu is often used to denote the mean. Uh, and in probability theory, the expected value is referred to as the capital E, the expectation of X. What does mean mean? Uh, well, it is one number that is used to represent a list of numbers. Uh, and that list could be 100,000 numbers or a, a very, very huge uh, data set. And if we wanted one number to represent all those numbers, then we would probably be interested in calculating the average of that uh, really, really long s list of numbers. How do we calculate the mean? Well, um, to calculate the mean of x, we would simply sum up all the elements in x, so summation x sub i, where i goes from 1 to capital N, x has values x1, x2, x3, x1 up till xn, so there are n number of values in x. Each of those values is represented by the subscript, the first value, second value, third value, and so on. So you would sum up all the values in x and divide by the number of values in x, and you would get the arithmetic mean of x. Um, note that there is there are different types of means. So you could be talking about geometric mean or harmonic mean. So it's important to uh, be precise and be specific about what we are uh, talking about. Uh, here in this video, we are talking about the arithmetic mean. Now, uh, if we talk about a random variable x, there are other ways to find out uh, the mean of, uh, of a random variable x. Now, when, we, when you take a probability course, you will be dealing with uh, not one data set, you will be dealing with random variables. Uh, so in that case, the formula to compute a m the mean is going to be very different from what we saw just now. So first of all, what's a random variable? It's a variable whose values depend on outcomes of a random phenomena. So for example, uh, height of human beings on Earth, well, that's going to be very random. Um, it would depend on a lot of other random phenomena. For example, the country of origin, the genetic differences, uh, living standards, childhood nutrition, illnesses. Um, so it's going to depend on a lot of random phenomena which will make height of human beings on Earth a random variable. Um, now, how do you calculate the mean of a random variable x? Mu of x. Um, often people use a subscript of x to denote uh, that it is the mean of x. So mu equals summation of x sub i small p sub i. What is x sub i? That could be any random outcome. And what is p sub i? p sub i is the probability of that particular outcome. So you take out all the outcomes and multiply with their probabilities and sum them up to find the mean of that particular random variable. So that's how you would do it for a random variable. Um, over here, we are interested in data sets. So try, let's try to look at an example in MATLAB where, uh, let's say we want to find out the average global height of adult men uh, that were born between 1896 and 1996. 
So this data was uh, publicly available um, through measurement surveys and academic studies, and it was published in this eLife uh, research article, which I'm citing over here. Um, so I've collected that data. Well, I've downloaded that data, and I have it as a CSV file over here. Um, so I took this uh, from an online source, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this in MATLAB and then try to make sense of the, the height data. So if I go into my MATLAB window, um, over here in my current folder, I can see that average height of men CSV file, uh, and I'm writing this code um, in that same folder. Um, so I have clear all, CLC, close all, we talked about what that is, and then I'm using a CSV read command to read that CSV file, and I'm not interested in the country, the code, the year, I'm just interested in the height in centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the CSV file from row 2, column 4, all the way down. So row 2, column 4, uh, column 3 is what I'm offsetting it by. So I use 2 and 3 as my row offset and column offset, and then I read this file. Uh, then I calculate the mean in centimeters, because my data was in centimeters, by simply using the mean command. Mean of HT gives me the mean height in centimeters, and then I take that and divide it by 2.54 to get my mean height in inches. So when I run this, I can look at the um, workspace here, which says the mean height in centimeters is, let me close out of this, let me bring this over here, in centimeters is a 168.33 centimeters for adult men, and in inches that is 66.3 inches, which is about 5 feet 6 inches. Um, so this gives me a, a global idea, so this one number indicates what my data is centered around, so the central tendency of my data set. However, if I wanted to learn a little bit more about this data set, I would probably plot its histogram. So if I go down this code, I've written up histogram of HT. HT is my height data that I've imported from the file. Um, so I'm, I'm having a hundred bins. I'm distributing this uh, data set over. So when I run this, I'm going to see this particular histogram where on the x-axis I have the height of adult men in centimeters and on the y-axis I have the number of men. So for example, there is a really, really high number of men, about 500 of them, that have uh, their height at about 168, slightly uh, less than 170 centimeters. So that's a very uh, Gaussian looking distribution for my high data set. So it, it gives me a little bit more in idea about what are the numbers doing. Uh, so by scaling this, uh, if I took the highest value here, which is slightly less than 600, if, and if I divided my y-axis by the highest maximum value, I will essentially be normalizing this y-axis and that will give me a, a, a probability axis. Um, and that, that's how we go, go from a histogram uh, and try to look at a probability distribution function, a PDF. Uh, but as you can see, the data is centered around my mean, 168.32, so which is falls under right here. So this, this, the number of men over here peaks at that moment. Uh, so uh, I can uh, look at this histogram and kind of validate uh, the mean measurement here. Okay, uh, I hope you found this video helpful.